too busy and I had to lay myself down for a while. Um, you know how we do it. We'll just uh, pick up where we left off. But I'm going to try to uh, go ahead and get through um, this particular show and then see if I can rest for a little bit. Might not be able to venture out, but <laughs> I'm still to give it a try. Okay, um, today we're going to deal with something that I've been hearing uh, people say for many years, black people say for many years, about uh, the black population and um, also how the, the white population is diminishing or reducing. Um, I hear black Muslims, black Pan-Africanists, uh, black militants all the time uh, talk about how white people are being wiped out and it sounds extremely crazy and I'm going to tell you guys why it sounds crazy and why it actually is a, a crazy thing uh, for black people to say and how crazy it really um, looks when black people are dying uh, by the thousands, okay? Um, when you say that uh, white people are being wiped out, it's the equivalent of somebody standing in front of you. They can see behind you, uh, but you can't see behind yourself. And you're unable to see what's going on uh, in, in the background. So you keep saying, the person tells you that uh, white folks are coming to kill you. And you say, no, they're not. And they say, okay, uh, there's a bunch of them right behind you. And you say, no, they're not. And then they say, okay, one of them is, is right behind you. You say, no, they're not. And they say, okay, he's about to, to hit you in the head. You say, no, they're not. And then they say, okay, he's hitting you in the head. And you're like, out. No, they're not out. No, they're not out. No, they're not. That's how crazy it sounds. When you see your black children, grandchildren, uh, and people dying, every single day. Yes, there are white people dying in wars and, and all kinds of stuff, but you look and sound extremely crazy when you see the number of black males um, that you have lost in the past 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and you continue to uh, deflect from the fact that the black population has been reduced uh, even lower than it was 44 years ago uh, before integration. You, you sound crazy when you talk about white folks being wiped out because they're having relations uh, with blacks. And I know you want to believe that when a black person gets uh, has uh, mates with a, a white person and they have a child that that child now becomes black um, that's the sentiment that you have because you need to believe that but when you actually look at what's going on you see that no matter how dark that male is nine times out of ten when he has uh, sex with a uh, white woman or no matter how dark that black woman is you know, when she has sex with a white male and has a child and that child it comes out lighter than them um, in a lot of the cases that child comes out uh, more white than black they come out light skinned and the lighter the skin, the less black they are. 
as simple as that. I know people get offended when you say that, but if you can't tell if a person is white or black, then they do not uh, count as far as black goes. It, it, you just, it, you know, advertisers use that trick all the time. They say, well, we hired a black person, and you're asking, you know, is this reporter, is she white or black? If you have to ask if the reporter is white or black, it defeats the purpose of having a black person uh, to represent the black community. It simply defeats the purpose if black people cannot tell whether or not it's a black person or not. Okay? I don't care if they're mixed with black and white Hispanic, black and white Asian, black and white uh, whatever. If black people cannot tell whether or not they're white or black, then they benefit uh, the white race, not the black race. Okay? So now, let me explain to you what the, because many blacks seem to forget uh, that white folks sit in committees and, and try to determine uh, what to do about the black population and how to keep it uh, to a low point where you have enough blacks to keep uh, the economy uh, moving when you need to, uh, but not enough, you're able to keep the numbers low enough that blacks do not gain any real uh, power in numbers, okay? Um, I want you guys to look up P.W. Uh, Bosa. Uh, he's from South Africa. He was in South Africa. Uh, he's the one who put Nelson Mandela in jail. And I want you guys to be really careful when you hear white people and black people call something a hoax. I want you to go back and, because you have a lot of people that call the Willie Lynch letter a hoax. You got a lot of people that call P.W. Bolton a uh, speech a hoax. I want you to go back and look at all the speeches that these people did. And I want you to understand when people say that that they're trying to uh, get you to believe that what you know to be racism didn't actually happen. Or they're trying to minimize what did happen. Um, so uh, you need to go back and look at uh, the person's other speeches and see if that's the kind of things that they tend to say. And the more speeches you see that that's the kind of things they tend to say, um, you can understand that um, the person that's telling you it's a hoax uh, probably has a hidden agenda for telling you that. But I want you to look up P.W. about the speech. And um, he was speaking to his white people and he was talking about what to do about uh, the number of black people that there were. Okay? But in around the, the 1970s. Um, I told you, white folks had a lot of issues with the fact that integration was about to happen. And so they came up with all these different committees to try and figure out how uh, to best control this situation, including the black population. They also had an issue with the fact that they had gotten up so far about 40% of the African continent and there was 60% that they were having a difficult time uh, getting because it was in the interior where it is um, too hot <laughs> for most whites to, to sustain for long periods of time. Okay, And there were committees who, um, whose job it was to figure out how to get it. Uh, that last, that final 60% of the African continent. And one of the things you'll find when you start researching is a committee who came up with the idea. Um, it had been put out there several times and um, many whites felt it was undoable. But it popped back up in the 70s. Um, of taking the Nile and making the Nile branch out like um, a tree and branch out uh, to the entire Sahara Desert and, um, 
different portions. They basically were going to use African uh, slave labor. <laughs> they were going to, to get uh, people that were so-called uh, criminals uh, in the prison and jails and stuff in the different African, uh, the different countries in, on the African continent. And they were going to use these prisoners uh, to build these waterways. And some of these waterways would cover thousands of miles, so that's a lot of prison labor uh, that they were about to get uh, to do this. And it was a, uh, what they called a, a massive undertaking, a massive task. But they, people keep, what it's kept feeling like it was the only way for them to get the interior, especially the Sahara. Um, was for them to do these waterways um, branched out from the Nile. So you got all these committees coming up with all these different ways to get black land resources and um, control the black population. And one of the things that one of the committees uh, came up with whose the job was to focus on how to uh, keep the black population at a minimum. And many of you should wonder uh, why the black population, uh, after all these centuries, is still so low. Um, people talk about it's 13% and 15% uh, and whatever. Uh, but how did it maintain that level? Why does it stay that same level? No other population has uh, maintained their same level. Why does uh, that black population seem to go nowhere. That right there should have been your first clue that someone was actually uh, setting out to control that population and keep it at a certain level. Um, but anyway, you have white, these, these white committees. Uh, and I want you guys to look up some of the things that committees and studies and scientists uh, come up with when it comes to uh, the black population. For example, there is a, I want you guys to look up the word drapetomania. Drapetomania is a condition that a scientist, a doctor, came up with. Um, and I want you guys to know what that, that once you know about this particular uh, study and this particular finding that this doctor uh, decided <laughs> was valid in the world, uh, Said, went along with it and said this was the great uh, finding of his. Once you understand this, it will help you understand all the different studies that white folks do when it comes to black people. It will help you understand all the different things that come out of committees uh, that white folks are trying to deal with the situations with black uh, communities. And it will help you understand that white folks are not in any way, shape, or form uh, out for the betterment of black communities, of black people, of black population, in any way. Okay? So look up Drapetomania. But uh, these committees, one of these committees, uh, came up with a way uh, that they were going to try and convince the Southerners who were uh, staunchly, and that's what they called it at the time, staunchly against interracial uh, mating. Even their, most of their laws uh, had laws against interracial mating. And so you had a group of northerners and uh, Washington insiders <laughs> that set out uh, to try and convince these southerners that they could guarantee to keep the black male population, now with their focus, the black male population in particular, the black population in general, um, keep it at a low enough level that they never had to worry about blacks uh, gaining any real power in numbers. And of course this got the, this made the, um, the Southerners willing to listen. And the way that they guaranteed it is that the Southerners would have to give up a certain percentage of white females for this particular uh, venture, for this particular 
uh, idea to work. And uh, with whites uh, looking at the population, if you take away uh, all of the different factors that uh, reduce black male population, um, the black males killing each other, uh, white males killing black males, um, uh, the prison industrial complex, abortion, all these different things. If you take before all of those things come into play, if you just took the amount of children born, there is usually, by nature, for every black female that's born, a black male is born, by nature. And this is something that scientists and doctors uh, have known for quite a while, that their nature has a very unique and serious balance when it comes to population and birth and uh, people, you know, the amount of uh, animals, insects, anything born. They have a unique balance. It's a balance that is uh, all throughout the globe that uh, there is enough male uh, for the female born. Now, once you, you take into account all of the different factors killing black males, of course that number diminishes greatly. But let's say you got 7% uh, black females born and 7% black males born. Well, whites don't too much, particularly even during, uh, especially during the slavery time, they found that they didn't need to focus so much on the reproduction of the black female in the slave trade because once a black female was impregnated, uh, she was out of the mix for nine months. However, in that nine month period, a black male could spawn, as they say, um, could spawn hundreds of black babies. Okay. So that was the focus, that's why the focus was put on black male reproduction. And there were uh, different ways that whites um, controlled black male reproduction. Uh, everything from injuring black male babies and uh, toddlers and teenagers, uh, injuring their male parts so that they could not reproduce. Um, they also uh, did things like trying to get them into um, the, 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 a controlled environment, if you will. Um, not so much a prison environment, but a separated environment from females uh, so that black males would not be able to have females to reproduce with. And the other one was, of course, to fracture their minds so that they desired um, they desired males and not females um, in a homosexual situation. And all these things worked. Um, each of them worked a different way depending on the region. But each of them were, their only um, uh, goal was to control the black male population in particular and the black population in general. Okay? Um, add to that on the other side, um, whites still had all of their different methods in place um, to reduce the black uh, population that existed um, from killing off a certain um, older blacks to controlling, killing off the number of black babies born uh, so that, uh, or control, and controlling the number of black babies born so that you can keep that number where you want it, okay? Now, when you talk about the 70s and these committees, this particular uh, committee decided and was out to convince the Southerners that if they gave up just 3 to 7 percent of their white women, of which white women were considered to be, at the time, uh, 28 to 33 percent of the white uh, population. Um, you had white females 
um, that, you know, would get sick. And theirs was the same way you had uh, white folks that they tried very much to keep uh, white babies from dying, uh, even, unless there was a plague or something. Um, you pretty much, they were able to get white babies um, to be healthy and, and uh, grow up to, to be adults. Um, but you had, you know, the, the white males that were born, white females that were born, and then these, uh, you know, what would be considered foreigners, which were still white. <laughs> if you had a white Italian, if you had a white German, if you had a white whatever, it was still white. But they considered those that they considered to be white Americans. Um, uh, of which in this white population in America, um, foreigners, foreigners took up a certain amount, uh, foreign white people uh, from other countries took up a certain amount. And then you had 33% you know, of white females and another 33 to 35% of, of white males, okay? And they said that if whites were willing Southern whites were willing uh, to give up just three to seven percent of their white females and allow them to uh, mate with Negro males, black males, that they could start reducing the black male uh, population within 10 to 20 years. And they set out a whole uh, chart to let, to convince Southerners um, how this would go about, how this would happen. So their goal uh, was by the ninth, by 1990, they would be able to show these uh, white Southerners that the amount of black males, uh, the black male population, had been reduced. Okay? And from 1990 uh, to 2000, by that 10-year period, uh, white Southerners were uh, jumping on board because they were able to see the results of w the diminishing of the black male population. Black babies in uh, general were becoming less black, as white folks call it, <laughs> less black. They were able to actually see those results, that there were more and more babies uh, in the black communities and other communities being born that you could barely even tell whether or not they were black. And this was something that actually uh, they made the decision to expand on. And so whites agreed. These are Congress people. These are uh, politicians from local levels. These are all kinds of people agree that they would continue uh, to give up three to seven percent of their white females depending on where uh, depending on the region um, to they didn't care if these white females they were actually uh, advertisers started being um, brought in to actually encourage uh, white females to get with black males music started being used uh, to encourage white females uh, to get with black males. Only certain uh, white females, they wanted the you know, less desirable you know, white females uh, to get with Negro males while uh, maintaining the wholesome white females uh, for white males. And the goal, of course, was to uh, to make the black population of babies born and less black. Okay? Now, if you have 33% of white females and you have you know, white females and um, you have another 33% of white males and you have only 7% black females and 7% of black males, it only takes a small amount of integrating and inter interbreeding to wipe out black males. I mean, black people 
see this, yet they continue to say that the white population is dying. Another thing that it makes it sound extremely crazy is that I told you before, a, a black female, by the time she's 35, uh, has four children, usually two females, two males. This is just average. And you have black families that had uh, many children before the 1970s. You had black families that, uh, like, you have people today talking about, well, uh, black people wouldn't be so poor if they didn't have uh, four and five children. Well, black people used to actually have 12 children. They had houses, cars, and all kinds of stuff. Um, they still got by, and some of them put them children through college, all kind of things. So clearly the data does not back you up on that uh, when it comes to your uh, claims about the number of children. But you have an uh, average of black females have uh, four children, two boys, two girls. And the goal is to get uh, the boys um, to be non-productive <laughs> and non-reproductive. Okay, so um, if you want a black male to be non-productive, you have to distract him. If you want him to be non-reproductive, you have to use one of those three methods that they use during the slave trade. You have to either injure uh, his, his male parts, which is uh, harder to do now uh, that they are not in. Uh, the slave trade, uh, the physical slave trade. Um, so that was uh, sort of phased out for the most part. But they were left with the, the other two, which is to get him into the prison industrial complex before he produces a, a child. If they can get him into the prison industrial complex before the age of 14 or 16, then they will prevent him and keep him, keep him in there for at least 25 uh, to 30 years. They will prevent him from uh, reproducing. Okay, that was the, the, what the committee uh, determined based on the statistics they had. And the other uh, method they had, of course, from the slave trade was to fracture his mind and make him desire males instead of females. And at that point, he becomes non-reproductive. Okay, this these methods have worked so well in the black community. Now, whites were more than willing, just like with the, the giving up of the three to seven percent white females, uh, they were more than willing to give up a certain percentage of uh, white male, white males and white females that were already homosexual uh, leaning or homosexual uh, tended, had homosexual tendencies or engaged in homosexuality. They've always had a certain percentage of whites uh, that engaged in that activity. The goal was to use that, that type of small percentage of whites uh, to turn out uh, the Negro male population. And after 2000, it became, they decided to use it also to turn out the black female population. And it has worked like a charm. But what you see when you're, when you're looking at the black population is you see a 13 head dragon. You see 13 different methods being used at the same time uh, to control, not wipe out. Remember, they still need Negro labor. They're not trying to wipe out the black population. They need that Negro labor. What they do on a, a weekly, monthly, yearly basis is make sure that the black population stays at a minimal level, okay, enough to sustain the labor needs that, are, are, that whites have, 
but not enough for uh, blacks to populate um, the lands like they, they once did. That's, the, that's their goal. And anyone who does not know this really needs to go and look at the timeline of the black population. See how much it's reduced in the past 20 years, the past 50 years, the past 100 years. You need to see how the population has, has moved, okay? But when you, t when you hear religious people and different people saying that whites are scared because uh, they know their population, their numbers are declining, and the, the black populations are growing. These people, one, I know, are not looking at statistics. They're not looking at the numbers. Uh, but uh, more than anything, they are creating a delusion that makes black people think that, well, I don't care if a black male gets with a white female. It doesn't affect me. Yes, it does. Because remember, uh, for every black male that you lose, uh, it's going to, that whatever that mulatto uh, child that comes out of it will either be in the white, uh, will be in white population, or part of the white population, or will be mixed into the black population and create another like child. So it may eventually uh, get to your black child, and your black child will mate with uh, light skin black, and your next generation will be lighter, and it'll continue going from there. Okay, so yes, it does affect you. And if you look at your communities, as people are leaving your community, as you're losing uh, people to violence, to um, you're losing babies to abortion, you're losing all these different things that are affecting the 13 uh, different things that are affecting the black population. You see that your communities are being left with less and less black people. As your communities are left with less and less black people, they have less power uh, to fight with. They have less power to protect their communities. They have less power, uh, less political power, less economic power, all kinds of things. So yes, it does affect you. But when you hear people saying that the white population is diminishing and the white population uh, is, uh, the black population is growing, these people are not telling you the truth. Not at all. Not one little bit. Okay? Um, the black population is, is, is uh, st strategically, if you will, uh, being uh, kept at a low level. And all of the different methods are working like a charm. Whites, on the other hand, work very hard uh, to keep white babies being born and to keep white babies being as healthy as possible. Uh, so that the white population is thriving. <laughs> and when you see the few, um, the few percentage of white females that are going after the black males, the loss of 7% white females or 2% white males to black females or um, the loss of those, that percentage of whites to the white population is nothing. The loss, imagine the loss of 5% of, of black males um, to the black community. Imagine the loss of 15% of black males. The loss of 25% of black males. To violence. These percentages start to add up. The loss of 10% of, of black male children to abortion. The loss of, you know, of black males to the prison industrial complex. 
when you add up all of these losses, mm -hmm. you see that you are losing black uh, population. And y'all need to start paying attention to that. Stop just regurgitating the things that you're hearing without actually looking for yourself and seeing that black people are in not just uh, in real trouble right now, but has been in real trouble and since the slave trade. You are still losing black males and just now because you don't see them hanging from trees, because you don't see them hung uh, by in, in the trees, you don't realize how many are being lost. You know it's a lot, but if you were seeing black males hung in the trees like back in the day, you would notice a hundred black males that were hung uh, in a row of trees. That would be a serious impact for you. You would notice that. That would be like, oh my gosh. Well, it's the same thing when you see a hundred black males shot down in the streets. Um, it's the same thing as being hung, them being hung in the tree. When you see a thousand black babies that are aborted, imagine a thousand black babies hung in a tree. How would you, how would that look to you? How would you see that? What impact would that have on you? Okay, and how would you view that in regards to the black population and the number of black children um, that we're losing? Y'all need to pay attention to that. When you see black males in the prison industrial complex, I know whites have gotten y'all thinking, oh, were they savages, they this, they that. And they belong there. Well, there's just as many white people doing the same thing that these black males are doing, and they're not there. When you see these black males being taken into the prison industrial complex, I want you to imagine the ships. Imagine a hundred ships that are docked outside a harbor, they're at a, a harbor, a port. And these black males are being taken onto those ships. What does that do for the population of your uh, village, of your town, of your city, of your neighborhood? What does that do to your kingdom? You are no longer building kingdoms. You're not even building black communities. Because you are not paying attention uh, to your population which are being decimated in a lot of places. When you see a black country and you see a thousand black bodies, they tell you that a thousand people died, or a million people have been killed in a matter of years. I want you to imagine a million people, bodies just laying on the ground can you imagine how much, how, many, how much area that would take up? A million men, women, and children's bodies just laying on the ground? Imagine, I want you to, to start looking at that. Because while white people may be losing hundreds and thousands in wars and different stuff, black people are losing millions. Those 13 methods that whites are using to, to keep the black population uh, at its minimal are working like a charm. And you guys have got to stop saying that white people are, their numbers are, are going down because they're not. White people are flourishing. It's black people's numbers that are going down. And until you are able to be honest, about that, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to be able to be honest about it first before you can even start to address the situation. Okay, so um, I am, the pain hit me so bad right now that <laughs> um, I feel like I'm about to pass out. <laughs>
but um, I'm, I wanted to go ahead and, and get that out there so that you guys can start really being honest about what's happening to the black population. Uh, start making memorials, um, different organizations. Start making memorials, uh, walls in your community of the you know, children that have died so that you can see the impact, you can see for yourself. Um, put up a wall with a picture of each of the children uh, that you know of that has died in your community. Um, put that, yeah, you yeah, got children forever painting on the side of, of buildings. Uh, one of those murals y'all need to be putting on the side of a building is the faces and the birth date and death date of each of those children that have died in your community. If you start doing that, you'll start seeing that you run out of wall. When you run out of wall, that means there's a problem, a huge, huge problem. When you run out of space to put the um, amount of, of people and children that have died in your community, that that lets you know the impact it's had. Okay, so um, I hope that you get you have a better understanding about the white population. Um, actual growth versus the black population, uh, which is diminishing. And when you hear uh, religious people and uh, uh, revolutionary, you know, militant people, revolutionary people know the impact that death is having on the black community. When you hear militant people and Pan-Africanist people and different um, individual organizations and whatnot telling you that white people are scared because their numbers are are um, going down or um, because they're going to be wiped out in the next 20 years or whatever. It is black people who is on who are, who's on track uh, to be seriously impacted in, as far as population over the next 20 years, 50 years, and 100 years. 100 years from now, uh, black people are on track um, to, sorry, my, my vision is starting to go. Uh, black people is, is not just, it's not like we're going blind, it's just that the dizziness start making you, uh, the room start moving. <laughs> but, um, so I'm going to definitely like, have to stop. Uh, but, um, start seeing uh, that in the next hundred years that black people are on uh, track to lose another half of their black population. Okay? And if you want to stop that, it starts with you admitting that we are the ones that are losing in, when it comes to population. Which means that those 13 things that we're going to go through um, more, in more detail, those 13 methods, sorry, that are being used um, to, um, to get black people uh, to mess them up. But um, in the meantime, uh, I want you guys, sorry, uh, I want you guys to start looking at <laughs> I want you guys to start looking at what the population uh, is doing on a weekly, a monthly, a yearly basis, whether it's going up or down, without just regurgitating what people are saying. I'm sorry, you guys, it's getting harder for me to look. Right, you're right. <laughs> but um, I want you to see the impact that all of these deaths are having. Okay? So, um, yeah, I know how we do. <laughs> um, I'm still here. <laughs> the, the next time, um, we're going to deal with some things, okay?